to talk about some of the market action. Folks, let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. Folks, you can check out Teddy's outstanding newsletter, the Tiger Forex Report. He puts out new issues every Monday morning with the market. He's got updates throughout the week when warranted. You can subscribe right here under the newsletters tab, folks. It's $97. It comes with a 30-day a money-back guarantee. Uh, and with the way this market is moving, with the way currencies are so important, uh, boy, looking forward to this conversation as always. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Boy, so we get some Fed minutes today, Teddy. Uh, we've had a little bit of volatility, but the, the last week, not as volatile as we've seen sometimes, but of course you got NVIDIA, the main event after the bell today. Uh, but where do you want to kick things off? Uh, I think, well, in 20 minutes, you got the uh, consumer confidence number for the EU. That's something I think that you have to kind of watch out for. Uh, obviously, the euro is one of the biggest components of the dollar index. So if consumer confidence comes out unexpectedly different, I think you could see a little shakeup because the currencies have been kind of flat the, the past couple of days. Like as a whole, it's kind of a dull week. You know, I mean, if you're trading intraday, like, most of the moves that you, if you didn't catch them in the early morning, they fizzled out before anything else, you know, anything, you know, really manifested the rest of the day, you know. So I wouldn't hit my expectations. I think you got to keep kind of small, you know, probably until uh, Thursday and Friday, especially because we'll see what the consumer confidence number comes out for uh, EU. If that shakes up the euro, it should get the dollar to even move a little bit. And if that does happen, maybe it starts to get yields to move. But as a whole, you haven't seen much action with yields. You haven't seen much with the um, with the dollar or even most of the currency crosses. I mean, you're seeing small trends, but as a whole, the volatility is very tight. So I would watch out for that. And then we have unemployment claims, you know, on uh, tomorrow morning also. That's a number we need to watch, you know, because right now we see the inflation is ticking back with numbers. So if we see unemployment claims going down and not up, that's another thing that push, pushes dovishness away from us. And then we also have, um, what is it, existing home sales on Friday, I believe, also. So that's another number you have to watch out for because we know what the, the last number did with the building permits last week. So we can see possibly see a shakeup in yields after that number. So today at 9 o'clock <clears throat> Central Standard Time, 10 a.m. your time, and then also watch out for tomorrow around uh, 7.30 and then also Friday at 7, around 9 o'clock as well. That was a good, pretty quick wrap up, man, going jumping around. And it is interesting in terms of, because I, you know, I'm always getting ready, looking forward to talking to you on Wednesdays at 40 past the hour. And we've been spoiled with the types of moves we've been getting because over since the last time I talked to you, I was like, oh, this isn't like it usually is where we got rip roaring rallies in one way or the right. other, kind of digesting some of that maybe um, for sure. the last week or so. You know, sure. you always put some great price levels in your newsletter in terms of just areas you're looking at. And for the dollar right now, we're just above 104. As I mentioned, mm -hmm. we do get Fed minutes. Is that something that you follow, that you look for potential volatility on a day like today, especially for the currencies? Not Are you really. Looking for some Not really? Okay. Not really. No. See, you know what? I mean, w w honestly, what do you think they're going to come out and shockingly say? I mean, like, oh, we're going to start getting dovish in May. You know, after the numbers that we've had, that, if anything, they're not going to say anything. You know, they're sure. just going to keep things, those things the way they are, the status quo, be like, yeah, we'd like to tell you that we're going to cut, start cutting rates, but we still have inflation signs that we have to be on, you know, yeah. and all indicators are lagging. Now, it's kind of funny, you know, those that get the Tiger Forex report, you notice that like the yen is hovering on the 150 level in the, with the BOJ. That's been a number we've constantly talked about. It's just hanging there. Then you have like the British pound. It's hanging on a directional pivot level. It's a monthly level that we've been working off of for months, and it's now it's just like hanging on it, you know. Mm -hmm. So the fact that these big monthly pivot levels that were just gravitated to, we're kind of seeing the, the median average now for the markets. Like they stabilized to that medium. So the question is, is now when is the rubber band going to shoot up or down to start a new trend, you know. And I nice. think right now, until we see some – economic indicators that are totally non-inflationary and in a big way i mean it's tough we have the stock market on its highs um you want to you want to fuel it more by cutting interest rates you know you how you're trying i mean if you want to keep us out of a recession and have the supposed soft landing or whatever um you're just creating a bubble you know so i think that right now the fed's gonna be pretty quiet you know the expectations of cut, you know, cutting rates. <laughs> I don't care what side of the fence you're on. Um, you're going to probably be lucky to see a cut in earliest June. You know, especially if over the next couple of weeks, you know, once what, what happens if in March we see a much lower unemployment number and then we see a higher CPI and PPI number next month? Do you think they're going to be cutting rates in May? 
no, it's not happening. Yeah. It's just not going to happen, you know. But we are in this kind of sideways period. So, I mean, I, I have to tell you, if you're a swing trader, be very careful. Wait for your signals right now. You have to really be disciplined in your trading. You know, don't, don't let the market come to you. Don't force a trade because if you are, you're over trading and you're going to lose money. That's period. That's, just how that, it's gonna that's work a great out. point to think about on a constant basis, man, having that patience because we all want to make that trade, man, find that trade. Sure. Um, and, and yeah, sometimes the, the best trade is no trade for sure. Right. And this is coming from a floor guy. Believe me, I'll sell anything. I don't care. It's <laughs> right. that way, you know? So it, yes. believe me, discipline, keeping your hands down and your mouth shut is something, it's a hard thing to do, but that's how you make money. You know, you have to be sure. there, especially now if you're going to fight the machines. And, you know, it's, it's a great point. I was reading one analyst uh, at some point. I think it was around the last Fed meeting or maybe the CPI numbers they were talking about. And it was just one take, but it resonated with me. And they, they, I forget who had mentioned it. It was just some analyst on Wall Street. But they're saying, basically, with all this data, you know, the only case really here for cutting is people who are basically stuck in some recency bias that we deserve to be at zero. Because otherwise, why would you ever be cutting when the market's basically on fire? You still have inflation. The only reason is because we kind of think that, that's how we need to go, that somehow we're mm -hmm. like, we went up and now we have to go right back down. And maybe that's just not the case. If we weren't so low for so long, sure. maybe many participants wouldn't have this idea that we have to go right back down just as right. quick because the, the data is just, I just thought it was a great point um, in terms of how much we're all impacted by how low they were for so long. But if you actually look like you were talking about, mm -hmm. which is why I appreciated those points because it, it lines up, it does. Uh, let's talk a little bit of crude if we could. So we'll be, sure. we back off. Um, kind of that $78 area, as I mentioned it though, we're up a little bit, yep. uh, 77 and change, but we've kind of, you know, we've been talking about this area now we've bumped up here a couple times. We're backing off. We're right at that kind of 77, $78 price point. What are you looking for that crude market? You know, right now, I, I think you're going to keep on pressuring resistance right now. I think that if you can get above this $78 and close above that, then we're going to head up into that like 81 to $83 range. Um, I, it's right now, you're making higher move highs and higher move lows. I mean, granted, the past week has been relatively sideways, but still, until you make a lower move low after a higher move high, it's hard to be neutral, let alone bearish. You know, you need a signal, you know, and until you, until you have a confirmation, well, you're, it's, the direction is going to be edging towards, you know, the ceiling versus the floor, sure. you know. So, I mean, all I know is gas prices <laughs> around Chicagoland are, you know, 75 cents to a dollar higher than they were just a month and a half ago. But then yeah. there, was also, there was also the problem with the refinery in Indiana, the big, uh, you know, okay. accident that happened. So, but still, yeah. you know. Oh, I've seen the slide here for sure, as in higher prices for sure. You notice mm -hmm. it now because right. it's been so remarkably low, I think, for so long. When we're flirting with the two dollar handle on the sure. price of gas, you can't help but when you know you see it rise into three fifty or whatever it is, just like that. And that's inflationary too. You know, that's something that Oof. the Fed has to be watching that. You know, we're coming oh, yeah. into the, the summertime switch for when the refinery switched the grade of you know gas to begin with, which brings prices up. You know, so you're looking at inflationary pressures no matter what on the average person for the next three to sure. four months. And this is yeah. coming into an, this is an election year too. So yeah. we'll see. Could be a lot we of We will see. <laughs> we will see. Teddy, I appreciate the time as always, man. Folks, check out the Tiger Forex Report. And don't forget, Teddy's got a couple of outstanding webinars. You go to the services tab. We're always talking charts. We're talking candlesticks. He's got his candlestick pattern, stock and option strategies out there. And he's got his cal capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads. Uh, Teddy, thanks so much as always, man. Look forward to